Welcome to another edition of Gold Bazan. Today we're going to be joined by Stephen Beitoshur, Iranian-American football player that currently plays for Vancouver Whitecaps, who also was selected to be part of Iran's national team during the World Cup. Our regular panelists, Sinai, Saimi, and Apesh Mampars will be monitoring this interview. Hope you guys enjoy it. present you with another episode of Golbezan podcast. I'm joined by one of our regular panelists, Pejman Pars. Pejman, it's great to speak to you. Hi, Fina. Nice to be back. Thank you. Uh, I'm also delighted to introduce Iranian-American defender Stephen Beitoshu, um, who has played for Iranian national team, and he currently plays for uh, Vancouver Whitecaps in the uh, Major League Soccer. Stephen, I know you've had a very busy schedule, but I'd like to thank you for taking time out and as an opportunity to speak to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I'm going to kick things off with a basic question. Of course, for some of us who followed football in the US, um, we were familiar uh, with Stephen's name and uh, we were aware that he was eligible to play for the Iranian national team. But Stephen, how did the um, Iranian Football Federation or, I, or Iran's coaching staff first get in contact with you in regards to the possibility of joining Team Meli? And when you, were you surprised by it when the call came? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it happened a few years ago, actually, back in 2011. They, uh, they, they saw me playing uh, with the, my old club, San Jose Earthquakes, and uh, I was doing well that year. Uh, I was leading my team in assists, so obviously it caught their eye and uh, got their attention. And Omi Namazi was the first one to really reach out to me and uh, just to kind of see my interest level and in, uh, possibly playing with the team. And uh, we kind of went from there, so that was the start of it, and it, it went to where it is now. Actually, I was uh, going to ask you as well about Omid and Amazi. He was, uh, there were some suggestions that he was the one that really pushed your name through to, to get you to play for Iran. Uh, is there any truth in that or or, uh, or not, if you just yeah, elaborate no, on that? Yeah, yeah he, he definitely played a, a big role in uh, recruiting me, bringing me to, to play for the uh, Iranian national team. And, uh, you know, he's a great guy. Uh, I had a lot of conversations with him. Uh, before and during when I was with the team. So, uh, yeah, he, he definitely played a, played a big role in, uh, in scouting because, um, uh, you know, him and, uh, and Coach, uh, Coach Hirosh have, have ties with the, the U.S. And, uh, you know, he reached out and, uh, you know, the rest is history. Um, was he, did he play a big part in you accepting the call or was it just more than Omid and Amazi being involved? He was mostly just uh, involved and just reaching out and, and uh, kind of uh, kind of the middleman, if you want to say. So uh, decisions, uh, yeah, had nothing to do with it. Just uh, he was he was there to kind of introduce and see my hands and stuff and things like that. Okay. Steven, uh, you were highly rated by Jurgen Klinsmann, and you were also close to, to becoming a, a U.S. soccer player for the national team. But uh, what was the reactions of your family and the close friends when you instead uh, chose uh, Iran instead of the U.S.? Uh, you know, I, I think anytime you have a situation like that, uh, your friends and family, the people who know you, you best, they're excited for you. Uh, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, where anytime you have an opportunity to play for a national team, uh, it's it's a good opportunity, and they just wish you the best. So that's what they did with me. Great, uh, Stephen. One of the uh, legacies of uh, Carlos Kerrish's era um, in charge of Iran uh, was bringing a lot of players of dual nationalities, whether he was players in Europe or. or Plays like yourself playing in the U.S., of course, Reza Uchan Nejar, Daniel Dovary, and Ashkan Dejayah being the uh, other names. How do you think the Iranian players uh, who played domestically that were already uh, part of the setup and the Iranian footballing community, community reacted to your arrival? And uh, did you feel welcome when you uh, when you first took part in uh, in the training camps and, and when you first played your uh, well, you 
made you debut for the national team? Yeah, you know, uh, obviously Coach Kirsch is known for bringing in talents from all over the world, not just the Iranian-based players. And, uh, you know, I think any time you have something like that, it, uh, it speaks well of the, the country uh, because they have talent uh, other places. So, um, you know, Coach, Coach Kirsch is doing a great job of bringing multiple players in from other places. And, and the players welcome. They, they were so welcoming uh, with other players coming in because – uh, at the end of the day, you, you want to play to win, and uh, in order to do that, you want to bring in you know the, the best players and uh, you know people who have who give you the best opportunity to win those games. So uh, you know we're all players in the end of the day, and we just we want to play every game and we want to win every game, and uh, that gave us the best opportunity opportunity to do that. Well, your first game for Iran uh, was against Thailand in the um, Asian Cup qualification uh, in 2013. Um, was that the first time you visited the country, and um, how did it feel for you to play for Iran? Uh, not first time visiting the country, no. I've, I've been there a few times before, but first time as far as the, the soccer standpoint goes, uh, yeah, that was the first time going there for uh, specifically soccer, so I couldn't really hang out with uh, the friends and family. Uh, it was just strictly work-related, so... It was a little bit different than what I'm used to. I'm used to going there to see the family and hanging out and relaxing. But uh, it was great. It, it was a while since I've been back before that. So it was great um, to be back and, uh, and to, just to, to meet all the guys. That was the first time I, I really got to meet all the guys. And, uh, and everyone was so great to be around. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, yes, Steven, talking about the guys, or I, I guess you mean the squad, especially at the World yeah, Cup. The squad. Uh, what do you think that was down to when we, we witnessed a lot of harmony from the outside? Was it due to uh, K-Rush uh, leading skills, management skills, or do you think that the players were generally uh, very professional, so to say? Uh, so, I'm sorry, what were you asking? What was the uh, what? About the harmony in, in the squad. Was it down to uh, how K. Rush was it as a manager, or was it uh, due to the professional reaction of the players, or what was the, the reason of the harming that we witnessed in the Iranian squad, squad in the World Cup? Uh, I don't. I don't think there was a problem. I don't know. Uh... I don't know if that's what you're asking. The harmony, you mean like the the camaraderie between the players? Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah, the yeah. Camaraderie. Yeah. I thought the camaraderie was great. Everyone was getting along, and uh, everyone would hang out, and uh, it almost seemed like a brotherhood with the team. So I thought it was great. And talking Thank about you, Pedro. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, about being a part of the squad in the in the World Cup. I mean, being World Cup is something every footballer dream about. Can you please uh, tell us about uh, uh, your feelings and your reactions, and maybe your disappointments of not playing in any of the World Cup games? Oh yeah, I mean, being in Brazil of all places for a World Cup, it's amazing because uh, everybody knows how big that country is on soccer. Uh, and then to be there in a World Cup where, let's be honest, it's the biggest stage out of anything, anything in the world. Uh, so it's every every kid's dream to to play in a World Cup, and for that to come true, uh, it was it was really it was a dream come true. Uh, obviously, I would have liked to play. I think uh, anybody that says they would be okay going there and not playing is is not truthful. Uh, anytime you want to go out there you want to play but at the same time getting to that stage it was a, a big achievement and hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get called back to the next one and then I can play Thank you Stephen um, yep. talking about the World Cup um, I mean as fans we were really hopeful going into the tournament and having looked at the group we thought we have a great chance of qualifying for the second round but what was the atmosphere like in the team? Did, we, did you genuinely believe that we had the chance of uh, getting out of the group? Or was it always about just going out there and, and giving our best shot and, and see what happens? Oh, yeah. I think the, the attitude was great. I think that's something we give a lot of credit to, to the coach for um, because he instilled that belief in all the players. And you have to give him credit because it's tough being uh, a foreign coach with, you know, uh, a different nationality of players and getting that respect from all the players 
uh, it's very tough and it just you have to give him credit because he was able to do it and everyone bought into his system into his belief and we all thought we could get to the next round we really did and uh, you know I think a lot of people were pleased with the with the performances obviously the end result we did get to the next round so it's tough tough to, to swallow but uh, overall I think it was a great World Cup uh, we came very close and hopefully next one uh, we can go even further and uh, for the final question before we go into our uh, social media section um, having played almost your entire career uh, in the US uh, when you first started training with the national team and being part of Iranian football what did you notice as the biggest difference in football in terms between uh, U.S. soccer and Iranian football? What was the most important thing that you noticed? Um, I don't know if there are too many differences. Uh, it's it's mostly about getting used to the personnel. Uh, that's uh, the biggest difference. Uh, anytime you play in any league in any country, I think... Uh, you're used to the type of players and the style that people play. And for me, uh, I just have to play a few times to, to see people's tendencies, uh, to see, uh, you know, even teams' uh, tendencies, not just players. So uh, the first time, I think, is, is always difficult for anyone to go to a different place. And then after that, you kind of get the, the sense of style people like to play, and then uh, you can adapt from there. Talking about uh, the difficulties when settling into a new environment, um, would I be right in assuming that uh, you had a problem with the language barrier? Uh, and if that's true, then, then how did you manage to deal with it? Because I know some players uh, spoke English, and of course, coach uh, Carlos Queiroz, as well as Onika Namozi, uh, they're fluent in English. But how did you, um, uh, you know, communicate with the other players? Was it difficult at first, or uh, it was, uh, you know, it wasn't? No, it was I, I that, speak uh, Farsi. That there's no problem at all. Uh, it was actually better for me because I speak Farsi and English. So when the coach is translating in English, and then, uh, you know, if we had uh, whoever was uh, Medi translate for us or a different person translate for us. So I got to hear it twice. So I really had no excuses, actually, if I messed up any training uh, set skills or set up or anything that we were doing so it was great I heard I heard it twice and I can really focus in but uh, no I had I had no problems there okay perfect um, now for the final section of our interview we have had a lot of questions coming in from social media um, the first one is uh, from Nilu Far and she was asking uh, how do you like Kerosh as a coach and a, and a mentor uh, I love coach Kerosh as a coach and a mentor uh, as a person he just he has so much respect and you can see it uh, one of those people that when he speaks uh, people listen and uh, it's it's a tough thing to to get and when you have it you just you appreciate it when a person has it like that and uh, I always just try to learn from him because he's been at the top 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 level so uh, anytime he says something you you want to take it on board and give it all that you have and of course have kids when we oh please go and carry on Pejman Sorry, Sina. Uh, as uh, we have a question from uh, from Oscar Melander, Swedish white cap named, um, he wants to know if uh, how you see your opportunities of playing outside of uh, North America, maybe in Europe or even Iran. Yeah, I mean, I think that goes uh, down to scouting when uh, when other scouts reach out to, to my agent. And trying to get me over there, so I'm obviously I'm willing uh, to go. Uh, there was a potential move before I came here to go uh, overseas, uh, but in, in the end, this this was the best move for me. But uh, you know, who knows when my contract is up? Uh, possibly making a, a move overseas. Uh, and uh, after your your football career, what uh, what's the plans then? Even if if it's maybe five, six, seven years from now, uh, do you want to be a coach? Do you want to do something in Iran, or is it totally something different? Um, you know, I haven't given it too much thought right now. I'm trying to focus uh, on soccer and, you know, uh, treating my body, uh, resting it, getting it stronger, eating properly, doing all the things that I have to do to be a good professional. Um, I think after that, once I get maybe a little bit older, then I can worry about uh, after soccer, but, you know, I'm going to get my coaching license. I have my degree uh, from school, so 
uh, I think I'll be I'll be fine when soccer's all said and done. But right now I'm still still young and still trying to accomplish many things in, in the playing sense. So uh, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll worry about that one later. Okay, and Stephen, for the final question, we have a question here from Shahriar Sudian on Facebook, and he's asking if anyone has contacted you from Team Ali after the World Cup, and if there's a possibility for you to come back and, and carry on playing for the national team. Yeah, yeah, they've uh, they've definitely contacted me after the uh, the World Cup. I've had a few conversations with them. Uh, they went well, and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, the, the guys do well right now, but uh, in the future call-ups. Hopefully I'll be there and I can uh, help our, our country get some good wins. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. I uh, really ap appreciate you coming on. Uh, good luck for the rest of the season with your club and uh, we hope to see you in the uh, in the Team Mali shirt again very soon. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it and I hope so too. Yeah. And thank that concludes this that concludes this interview. Thank you to Pejman Pars who assisted me through this. Um, we will be back with more interviews and episodes, uh, but till then, take care.